Hello, Rail fans. This is your latest PSA, your public service announcement about cleaning track. Something that plagues all us track powered guys that just don't want to switch to battery. <laughs> but uh, this is this is how I do it. Most of us use something like this. It works works quite well and you can use rubbing alcohol spray that right on there if you need to get a little more aggressive you can use uh, goo gone but you just got to be careful because that's uh, that can get real slippery on your rails so if you have a lot of grades um, your trains gonna start slipping and you're not gonna be able to haul as much up up and down those grades um, but I like using it and I just reduce my trains, so the length of my trains, you know, so just spray some on there and just go to it. You know, so that's the, probably the easiest way, you know, if you don't have a, a huge railroad. Uh, just spray some on and then, you know, run around a couple times or once or twice. And you're all, you're all set. Something a lot of us have is one of these. An Aristocraft track cleaning car. It came with a little pad. I think LGB made something similar. And that just goes on the track. You know, just pull it along with your train. And it's like an eraser. And it tends to, you know, cleans up the track. I, I got a little more... Kind of parked that one. And I got a little more aggressive with my uh, track cleaning. Uh, just because um, you got to have the track clean, you know, to conduct electricity. But you also need to have the junk, like, you know, leaves, uh, twigs, you know, uh, pine cones, uh, whatever might be falling on your on your train layout, um, you know, in between operating sessions. <clears throat> and, of course, this time of year, it's springtime in New England, and we have pollen. Pollen is making such a mess of the railroad right now. You can probably see it, you know, on, 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 top, of, on top of, like, a lot of, it's, like, covering everything makes such a mess on the track uh, even if I just cl I clean one day and the next day it's it's just as bad so it has to be clean again so I made up this rig here <clears throat> yeah so it's based on a centerline hobbies uh, brass track cleaning car so you can kind of see the take that off see the little roller I made up it's a uh, scotch bright pad that's in there wrapped around a dowel and stapled and I also put a rail broom, put a rail broom on there. So the motor's underneath this cover. And I wanted to make it look like, you know, something that could actually, you know, run down the track. And uh, there's even like a little, little grid there, you know, in case a rock or something flies up and won't take out the engineer, the little guy that's inside there. Yeah, so I've made this pot from a Hotland, I mean, a Hotman um, Locomotive Works, um, uh, tanker so what I did was I put a valve inside and that's the little T on top there so I can operate the valve and then it goes down to this bar and it drips out these little tiny little tiny things here onto which which are set for the track and it drips onto the the roller and just goes around and around uh, really does a nice job and what how I originally designed that was I was gonna put um, rubbing alcohol inside of it. It's 70%, uh, so I won't eat any paint or anything. Uh, but yeah, 70% I was gonna put in there. Um, but what I've been doing lately is I actually put water inside, and that works out quite well. Uh, you know, the trains just keep on running, um, but with water, um, I need to have a dryer car. So that's part of the train as well, my track cleaning train, and that's this little rig right here. 
So that's all that's all custom made. Basically it's like a well car. And originally I have three of these set up in there. Uh, which are basically just paint rolls that I cut down, cut the ends for them, and there's a piece of um, rebar inside for a little bit of weight. I think some might have a fat dowel in there, you know, just to give it a little weight. This is just an extra one sitting there, just for looks. Or, or I can swap them out if it gets too wet or something. Uh, I, and then I upgraded to these, just a little block of wood, baluster I think, with some uh, scotch bright uh, material. You can see how nasty it gets. And every once in a while, I'll just um, you know rub it off, clean it off a little bit. Um, but yeah, look at all that. There's pollen, all the junk on there, just from the last couple days. It's disgusting. Yeah, so th that works pretty good. It just kind of sits on the track. Um, this one right here is um, I just made this, and it's weighted. Uh, so I put some, uh, drilled it out, just piece of two by four, drilled it out, uh, put a couple of little pieces of uh, rebar in there, just for some steel. And you can see how disgusting this one is too. It's just a diff different kind type of scouring pad, um, but look at all that junk. You know that would stop a train in its tracks if that was left allowed. You know, uh, uh, on the tracks, just make a mess. Yeah, so that that is working out uh, better than I expected to, and that just that just scoots along on the track too, just glides along. Yeah. This is some of the this is some of the stuff that I use: uh, paint and varnish, dripping pad. If if it's 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 long enough, uh, it's 11 inches. I had to seek it out. I kind of had to order it actually from my local hardware guys because um, the regular store didn't carry this length uh, to fit onto my uh, my pole sander. So you got to have oh geez, look at all the dirt on there. But you got to have that. Now something else that that's a concern when you're running track power is it's not just the track. It's also the wheels on the engine. So I can bring one in. No, nope, maybe not. I think it's I think it's dirty. Let me go down and give that little tap. Here we go. Whoop. Wrong track. Like that switch. Ah, hey, look at all this junk. A leaf caught in the switch. I would do it every time. Let me just pop in here. All right, I'm gonna clean these wheels. Put the camera down. I'll show you how to do it. What did I do with my paper towel? I'll have to use this old one. Yep, yeah. so got this old paper towel here. Spray a little of this on there. And what I like to do is hit the rail like this, just one wipe, just to make it a little slippery. Put that down there. Pull this forward. that on there like that and then apply some power just let those wheels spin kind of rock it back and forth I'm not pressing down or anything just rocking back and forth that should be good for that one and look at that <laughs> that is an issue you get too much of that built up and your train is not gonna be moving So even with the, even with my fancy uh, rig there, cl trying to clean up the track, it's still accumulated that much junk. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> All right, now they're all clean. Yeah, that one's gonna be riding much smoother. 
but when things get a little heavy, say as a bunch of leaves and junk on the track, I'll actually, I actually built this one. Just another means of cleaning the track. So I call this one the Rail Warrior. And what it is, it's a blower car. I have some videos on the Cape Cod Train Todd on YouTube of this thing in operation. Uh, I don't have a battery in it right now because I, I tried to put one in, but uh, it needs to be charged because it hasn't been used in a while. Um, so yeah, so basically it's a Bachman caboose that I cut down. I made this depressed center flat car for it. Got steel wheels on it just for Bachman pass passenger trucks. Uh, this is an inch and a half PVC tubing. I just made kind of into shotgun barrels. You know, that, direct, that just knocks, pushes leaves down. And it's an 18 volt um, battery that I used in there. And it's blowing a 12 volt, five inch uh, Atwood blower. Yeah, so this is just safety for the crew so they don't get whipped, pulled right in. That's this engine that's supposed to, you know, just for there, just supposed to operate the whole thing. But uh, that does a, that does a dynamite job of blowing the leaves in the fall and the, just getting some junk off the track. Now in the winter time, of course it's going to snow where you get the proper kind of snow. I built this one as well. This is a rotary. So it has a five inch blade on the front. I put these little wing, extra wings on it. Steel, do not put your fingers in there, children. This goes back and forth. So it's based on a USA Trains uh, engineering car, I think it is. This one doesn't, I took the battery out of this one too. But you can see what I did. It's got the switch in there, the DPD switch battery usually just jams right in there just fits and I can flip the switch and have the blades turn one way or flip the switch the other way and have them go the other way and that's why the chute is directional and uh, some snow actually comes out of there but most of it just just gets thrown out of the front but yeah I took a cordless driller pot uh, 12 volt and um, just ran it through there and that's that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it pretty basic but uh, it works, and I also have videos of that working on uh, YouTube if you want to check them out. Now here's another one that I rigged up. I don't know if the lights are working. Yeah, the lights work. <laughs> yeah, I gotta see where you're going. Yeah, but that's an Aristocraft wedge plow that I took off the gondola and made it to a Bachman caboose. Yeah, put a little, made a little flanger out of a piece of pipe there, a piece of PVC pipe. And I put all kinds of weight in this thing too. It, it weighs so much to keep it on the track. Yeah, so that, that does a good job too. Look at it, it wants to, wants to take off. <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's a good thing for the, uh, removing the snow. Yeah, when we get it, you know, sometimes you just can't do anything. It's just, it just gets so heavy. You can't move it with the trains, but, uh. You know, it's fun to try. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. You know, you got the you got the first line of defense right here against dirty track. And your pads. And you can use you can use rubbing alcohol. You can use goo gone, but that's slippery. Um, sometimes when it gets really bad during this season, I'll actually use um, a bucket of soapy water. And just just run it down, um, dip my brush into it, my uh, you know track cre uh, cleaning brush there, and just go to town. And it, that that does a really good job. But I do like this one. This is kind of neat how it drips, it cleans, sweeps the track, drips the water. Uh, this is also track powered, and I'm working on a situation where I can where I can this engine right here will be wired to this just to give this extra because when these wheels get dirty. It um, <clears throat> you know uh, starts starts sputtering, breaking down, and the brush doesn't spin like it like it should. Yeah, so creating you know putting extra wheels on power onto this um, it is a goal. So I got I got to do that sometime in the uh, the near future. Yeah, and then of course you have this one too. Yeah, so that that does a that does an okay job. Yeah, 
but uh yeah that's a that's about it that's how i uh keep this uh crazy uh railroad running all right happy railroading to you